Four-time champion, nine-time All-NBA player, two-time league MVP, NBA Finals MVP, two-time scoring champion, the list goes on and on. Wardell Stephen Curry II isn't close to culmination. Curry just had some massive words about his future in the association, which you have to stick around for. For starters, he is the Golden State Warriors icon living for having become both the greatest player in Warrior history and the greatest shooter in NBA history. He is the world's icon living for having definitively revolutionized the sport and bringing a whole new wave of audience members to the game. Steph's combination of exuberance, skill, mental toughness, and IQ has brought basketball to a realm of enjoyment that before his arrival as a superstar, we didn't think was possible. Right before displaying to you why Curry's achieved the impossible, looking at the agenda comparisons that have unfortunately attempted to diminish his all-time status, and then debating how many more rings the Warriors dynasty can capture, we are so close to 100k subscribers, I can't thank whoever it is watching enough for your loyalty. Your continued support for this platform means everything. If you haven't already, turn on notifications, hit the sub box, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow my other socials at Hoops. In addition to the fact that he's achieved what he has with such an undersized stature for the NBA, Steph has also done the impossible when it comes to how he's carved out the legacy that he has in what was once strictly known as the LeBron era. Curry has lost to James in two playoff series, including this year and also in 2016, but has also won thrice against James in 2015, 2017, and 2018. Just because Curry had Durant in 2017 and 2018, LeBron had Kyrie in 2016 and AD in 2023. Curry's legacy will unfortunately always get diminished due to the agenda that constantly stacks him up against LeBron. LeBron is definitely the most dominant player of this generation, but let's not act like it isn't because of Steph that pulling up from 30 plus feet has become the norm. Sadly, Steph's legacy is also getting diminished by diehard Magic Johnson fans. Now, I've said in the past that Steph's the greatest point guard of all time, but accolade-wise, I'm not afraid to admit Magic has him beat in that department. While Magic and up to this point Curry have both never made an all-defensive team, Magic's quadrupled Steph in Finals MVPs, despite the fact that Steph had two of them stolen from him. That Finals MVP argument will always be used against Steph, despite Iggy and Durant being provably less important factors to those respective championships. Magic also was a four-time assist champion, something Steph never accomplished once. However, Magic stands putting out videos like this one on your screen, basing their narrative almost entirely off of accolades, are forgetting these next facts. Steph plays in the most skilled and athletic era of basketball. The reason the game today is the most skilled and athletic is based off how the game has grown and quite frankly, human evolution. In said era, Steph has done what Magic never did, become a scoring champion, and he's done it twice. But this next fact is most eye-popping for those who think this argument between Magic and Steph isn't even close. From both the free throw line and from three point range, two categories we can all agree are two of the most important in terms of statistics. Curry tops Magic by a combined 18.6 percentage points. Steph's 2014-15 season saw him become the only unanimous MVP in the 76 year history of the NBA. When debating how he's the greatest scoring point guard of all time, the fact that he could miss his next 500 threes and still have a higher percentage than the second all-time ranked threes leader in Ray Allen speaks to Curry's dominance from a quote-unquote getting buckets perspective. Again, accolade-wise, Magic definitely tops Steph. But A, that doesn't mean he's more skilled or has a higher IQ than Steph. And B, for how long will his accolade lead hold up against Steph? At the same age Magic had well past the point of starting to slow down, Steph somehow seems to continue to improve every aspect of his game. At age 35, Steph is coming off a playoff run where in 13 games he averaged a postseason career high 30 and a half points. In the regular season, he averaged a career high in blocks per game, plus a career third best in both points per game and field goal percentage. This was all in his 14th NBA season. 
For a player to set those kinds of feats with so much mileage racked up speaks to the fact that Curry is far from done. Since Curry is only one behind Magic in titles, one behind in all NBA appearances, one behind in scoring titles, one behind in MVPs, and only three behind in all-star appearances, you can envision the narrative starting to shift, which is why so many are starting to label him the greatest point guard ever. The argument can be debated back and forth for hours, I'm not denying that, but the simple statement I'd leave it at if I was trying to be the most unbiased I could possibly be is that Steph was the better scorer and Magic was the better passer. They're so different in so many ways. To back up my bias towards Curry, I'd further argue that in an era that was albeit more physical but with less imposing athletes, a big part of Magic's game was being a back-to-the-basket player. Johnson had the benefit of using his 6'9", 220-pound frame to his advantage, while the 6'2", 185-pound Curry didn't come close to having that luxury. How much Curry has achieved in lieu of his size disadvantage speaks to his skill, intelligence, and diligence as a player. Speaking to the fact that he's got a long way to go, Steph just said this regarding his playing days. Quote, I'm in the prime of my career in a sense of what I'm able to accomplish. Just out there and what the future may hold trying to achieve, hopefully win more championships and push the envelope as far as I can. But I mean, the biggest thing is just inspiration, right? End quote. This tells me that Steph isn't being hampered by his body slowing down in the slightest sense, given his love for the game and general mental state is still able to drive him to such an extent. The fact that Steph only needs the slightest bit of inspiration to get revved up is terrifying for his competition and mesmerizing for anyone who truly appreciates the game of basketball. That begs the question, how many more championships can Steph and the Dubs win? If Draymond Green and Klay Thompson can match his longevity, the answer could legitimately be two to four more. Draymond did say after winning the chip last year that he was quote unquote pretty certain the Warriors will win three of the next four NBA titles. Given the ever-stinging 2023 second round exit, for that to come to fruition, the Dubs would need a three-peat. Will and or how many chips can the Dubs still win in the Curry era, in your opinion? Let me know down below. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.